incognito. <laughs> oh, good morning, Arlene. Monica, so nice to see you. Terry, hi. <laughs> Good morning, Sherry and all. <laughs> Hello. So nice to see everyone. Well, it's eight o'clock and we always say we're going to hop right on, at, on in the show and keep it on time. Hello, I see Colleen is coming in there. So welcome, Colleen. But hello, everyone, and welcome to Fabulous Friday TV. TGIF, thank God it's Friday, but also thank <laughs> God I'm fabulous. And today, Fabulous uh, Friday TV is all about celebrating fabulous, um, living fabulous, being fabulous, and most important of all, feeling fabulous. So I'm Sherry Clergis. I'm live from Vancouver, uh, Canada. I'm the editor of At 45 Magazine. Um, for when life changes and I'm co-founder of Fabulous University, a beautiful platform for women to take courses wherever they are in life. And I'm Anne Marot and I'm very happy to be here and I am the founder of Women Connect, my very beautiful project of an elite membership for women um, helping to empower women all over the world and a co-founder of fabulous university with my dear friend sherry um, and uh, thank you for joining us today on this fabulous friday for for our show i'm looking forward to it back to you sherry so Anne and i are feeling really blessed to have you guys with us um, you know, some places in the world, it's uh, supper time. Uh, some places like Australia, for one of our guests, it's in the middle of the night. And um, it's just, we really appreciate the fact that you are joining in with us and taking time out of your busy schedule. We hope that you'll share the show out um, as there is so much to learn and there is power in us coming together as a community. So thank you again. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. The sh uh, show is broadcast live on Facebook, um, sometimes on YouTube, but we always are um, taping the show for delivery again out into the YouTube world. And so if you do not want your person out there, keep your camera off. And just remember as you're sharing, um, you know, you want to edit uh, what you're sharing because it will go out uh, on the internet. So today we're getting in touch with our inner being, that which feeds our soul. Um, lots of times people think that's religion, but uh, it's not necessarily so. Um, and what we're exploring today is, are you dedicating time, energy, and focus to developing that deep understanding of yourself and connecting with yourself? So we're exploring some ways to do that today, and it uh, is going to be an amazing show. So I just wanted to share a little bit about my story and as far as connecting with um, my inner self. I was brought up in a very religious household, a very strict religious household. And so I was in my 50s before I ever thought that there were other ways to touch base with my spirituality and that inner self. Um, and it all came together just as I was launching the magazine. And it was sort of a trifecta of things. One, was I got invited to a party um, where there was a, a spiritual uh, leader doing readings from uh, angels. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go to the party, but I'm having nothing to do with that. And one of my friends said, well, you know, why not, Sherry? Like, like what's the, the issue? And it's like, oh, well, you know, I think it comes from my childhood. And I sort of had to do some deep uh, thinking about that. I got to the party. I said, yes, I, I, I want a reading. And it was just such an experience. 
And at that time in my life, I was facing huge challenges. And what this woman said to me was, I have kept it with me all the time. She says, Sherry, I see you in a room. I can't hear you, but you're screaming. And honest to God, that is exactly how I felt at that moment. I was just screaming to get my voice heard. Then a couple of weeks after that, I interviewed um, the, a woman on, on the show today, Wallace, and she uh, had, had this, um, we found out just at the end, or I found out just at the end, that she had created these oracle cards and she was led to do a reading for me. So she did that, and, and I'm going to speak about that a little bit later. And then the last thing was my massage therapist. I had a huge heart issue at the time and I was having to go for an operation. And she said to me, Sherry, I'm led to tell you to get in touch with this woman. Um, because I think she, I think you need a reading before, you know, you, you go in, um, in for an operation. And so I had that reading and it was again, spell binding. And, and so within a very short period of time, I'm talking about two weeks and I was facing a life altering decision. All of a sudden, all these three things came to be. And so it's been a huge journey, but so much fun as I've explored that, that thing. And as time goes by, often, you know, um, my life gets out of control again. And I'm always led back to uh, making sure that I'm in touch with my inner being. So it's something that we all need to do. And it's so important because if you're trying to reconnect with yourself, you can't do that unless you're looking inwards. So that's my story today. And over to you. Okay. Well, um, you know, I I have um, when many years ago. Now we're talking many, quite a lot of years ago. Uh, I got divorced and um, I had to leave the country that I lived in, and I had to go. I I came back to my own country. And I was um, with some friends and, I, you know, was in a really bad state and for the first year. I, I couldn't do anything. Um, and this uh, one woman that I met at a, at a gathering with, with some friends, um, she told me that I should actually speak to this woman called Nina. And she, um, I was living in a town called Durban in South Africa at the time. And she said, you should speak to Nina because she um, helps uh, companies like businesses um she helps guide them and she's she's actually an astrologist and but she helps guide them on business on business on a business platform as well and she has helped many many people and she has a really good reputation of doing this and i thought oh what like is it you know fortune telling or something um so i didn't know if i was in that space and i was and she said no it's really it's actually um, uh, astrology, you know, uh, and um, so you were born on a certain date, and there's no denying that you hear. And so, you know, she will, um, she'll talk to you about um, about certain things that will really open your eyes. So anyway, I went to see this woman, and she was so delightful. And uh, she, uh, the main thing was, of course, I wanted to know that, you know, that I, uh, for myself if I'd be okay, because I was like broken. Um, and then, and what about, would my kids be okay? And, you know, and she told me some amazing things. But, you know, the thing is that when you have this, uh, you have, you spend valuable time with someone um, with this talent and, and ability to, to, to talk about things that you don't, we, you don't, you know, you, you're not going to be in that place unless you with that person you know and she she told me a lot of things and um and i was i was happy but she told me that her actual astrology report would be more in detail and so i remember um her sending me this report because it takes a few days to to put together and i never opened it i never opened it until 20 years later and <laughs> 
the thing was like I came across this by chance because I was tidying out a box um, you know recently just be just before I left for America um, I was tidying out a, out a box and I saw this sealed brown thick envelope and I thought oh my gosh I thought this was like missing and I opened it up and I started reading through her report and I just, I was blown away more than, I think I wasn't in the right space at that time to hear the things that she was telling me, but reading it 20 years later and all the things that she said, all of them had taken place. And, 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 the, and the way, you know, that, I mean, there was, there was a reason for me being here at this time um, in this country and doing what I'm doing. And um, she even spoke about my trips overseas. And I go every time, I mean, you know, every time I get a chance to go on holiday, I go on holiday because I can still run my business. And she spoke about, she spoke about uh, me going to America um, and, and, and having, I mean, in those years, I would never have guessed I would have, that I would have American, um, you know, clients, customers. And um, she spoke about all of that. And I just realized the value um, of, of getting, actually going in deep. And then I, I met Wallace who's on the, on the call and, um, and I, and yeah. And, and then I started working with Wallace and she obviously Wallace is going to speak to us today, but I realized that I needed to to go and look into this a little bit more deeper, and I needed I needed that, and and the right people were coming into my life, um, showing me, you know, that I actually needed that. I needed to have Wallace in my life to um, for her to show me those different things, and so um, I'm. I don't know if I've told you, Wallace, but I'm very grateful for you and for all your learnings and, and things that I've experienced while I, um, I I did work for you. But so that is my story. So I think it's very good that we 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 look into ourselves, you know. And yes, I, I do believe that the answers are all inside of us there already. But when you you, you get to know your true purpose, your soul, you know, who you are really, I mean, um, I don't think we can ever stop knowing, but I think that that's just a brilliant path to take and in, in getting to know ourselves better. So that's my story. Well, thank you for sharing that. And that is like uh, just amazing. But I think the one thing that I took from that and, and, and is, you know, sometimes just like you said, we're not in the right space space yes. or the right place to receive the information yes. but sooner or later the right information at the right time is coming at us and we just have to be open for when that is we can't make it happen it's going to happen yes yes like the envelope i mean the envelope appeared it said i'm here now read me <laughs> <laughs> just amazing well thank you for sharing that um, so today, uh, as you know, last week our show was packed. Uh, we were talking about money and we had some just amazing uh, sharing on that show. Um, but it was so busy that we didn't get to do any uh, prizes and giveaways. And so today we've got more than normal. So we're going to hop right into it. So today what I want you to do is I want you to think for just a couple seconds while I'm uh, telling you about the prize. And this is what I want you to think about. What is your life purpose? And what is the personal gift that you have to work with to achieve that? Okay, I know it's a deep question, but I want you to think about it and put it in the chat. So what is your life purpose and what is the personal gift that you have to work with? Now, remember, this is not rocket science or something. So just pay attention to the first thing that comes into your mind and put it in your chat. Uh, and the prize is going to be this book, which I am so proud of. I am the co-author with 364 other women. And it is got it's just packed full of inspirational stories and um, women sharing what they've learned and how their life uh, 
circumstances have affected their path. So it's a fascinating book. Um, and uh, I'm going to give a copy away. So I'm going to be reviewing the chats. And um, sorry, somehow I missed again how my chats here. Just give me a minute here. Has anyone put anything in the chat? Okay, I will leave it to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> that book is waiting. If anybody, I know it's a deep question, so you might need a little time. Yeah. But I'm going to say again, what is your life purpose? And what is the personal gift you have to work with? Okay, so uh, we're going to move on to our first uh subject expert and that is wallace pattison now wallace is a mother a grandmother and the founder of bold not old an age positive movement the movement is about encouraging others to be seen and heard although bold not old began with people 50 plus younger people are inspired by what they see and hear and there is a need for a more positive mindset in relation to aging and we all know that's a fact so doing what makes us happy what brings joy to our lives gives a positive effect on both our physical and spiritual well-being and wallace encourages people to be bold not old and when i uh, wallace is one of the women that i spoke about earlier when i interviewed wallace for my magazine she gifted me with a set of oracle cards and i've shared them out on my facebook um my personal facebook a number of times um so two of those cards t fell out of the path and her reading led me down a path of a journey well that was destined to be but I've used these cards with my family, my friends over and over again, and they're filled with great wisdom. And I'm just thrilled to have her sharing uh, with you and uh, how to get in touch with your spiritual side. So Wallace, welcome. Thank you so much for getting up at two o'clock in the morning uh, to visit our show and share with us today. You need to unmute. Oh, there you go. I'm go done. for it. I'm unmuted. Hi, everyone. And uh, yes, I'm Wallace Patterson, and uh, this is fabulous. Thank you for having me on, and um, thank you for all those, you know, wonderful, uh, glowing things that you've said about me. Um, my journey has been like many, many others. It's not unlike yours or Anne's journey as well, um, except that it, you know, took place many, many years ago. So I guess for me, um, I'm on this journey, I'll call it, of unlocking transcendence, I'll call it, and, and you know, developing um, this idea of, you know, having a spirit mind. And I think for all of us, that's a journey. You know, we take a journey to do that. There's no... Um, you know, express teachings. There's no, there's things we learn along the way and we we unlock those or we come across those like you did with the cards and did with the lady who was the astrologer down the line a little bit, you know, working with me and coming across me. And those things exist for us all. And I that's part of our journey our personal journey which is absolutely imperative and necessary so i was listening to you early earlier sherry talking about um you know you're now able to or you're getting very close to to you know going off to greece and and you know fulfilling this idea that has come this feeling this you know thing that has come for you that says go to Greece. um i think that if we're working in our lives then 
I think the key is to not let our minds get too involved. We need our minds to do the work. The mind is the doing thing. But if we can just take it and just put it aside um, and allow our soul and our spirit and our intuitiveness and our knowingness because we come with it all. There's nothing we need from anybody else, from anything else. We're unlocking it along the way. We're unlocking our knowledge. We're unlocking everything that we know infinitely from greater consciousness when we allow ourselves to work with our intuitive selves. So, you know, for me, this, you know, these Oracle cards, when I channeled these, you know, this was about an assistance or a thing to, you know, help unlock, you know, some questions because this journey is about questioning. This journey is about learning. It's about, um, it's about gaining greater tools not necessarily always answers. I think we all get caught up on, and I did for a long time, I got caught up on wanting, wanting to know my purpose, wanting to have the answers. And as humans, the human part of us, this mind we're carrying around, wants that. It's an ego. It wants the, you know, it wants the, where am I going? What am I doing? What's my purpose? What effect am I going to have? What am I going to be doing? And I think that what I've learnt on my unlocking of this idea of transcendence is that there isn't, there isn't any purpose per se. There's no great big aha. What there is, is where we fit, where we're drawn to, where we, where we feel most joyous, where we feel most comfortable. It's a bit like when we walk by, you know, the, the bottle of, um, you know, um, pills or, or, you know, things that we'd like to take for health. When we walk by the bottle, if we just simply look at it and go, oh, I should take one of those. Not to then start doing the great analysis of why you should be taking it and why that thought came into your mind and why you, you know, why at that very moment, because we get stuck on all that. Whereas I got this feeling I want to go to Greece. Okay, I'm going. That's it. I don't need all the answers for it. I don't need to know why and when and how and in what way and whether I'm going by boat or plane or, or I'm going to get a lift. or <laughs> It doesn't matter. The whole point is that the unfolding of it is I'm going to go to Greece. I have no idea how that's going to unfold for me, but it will. And won't it be nice when it does? And I was talking to somebody about that this week when, you know, they were asking me some questions about, um, you know, they were talking about actually getting older. And this person is 80 years of age. It was yesterday I had the conversation and, you know, things, Things are meant to be. I went for an appointment yesterday, which was a fairly important appointment for me. And uh, I asked this friend of mine, would they like to go along? And they said, yes. I said, come for the ride. It was about an hour and a half drive out of Melbourne. And uh, we got there and we were waiting for the person to turn up, this particular person to turn up. And my friend was just chatting about different things. And she was talking about, oh, I must have you come around and take a look at, you know, this yard and the pergola because I'm a big yard 
you know, garden person. And she wanted me to give her a little bit of a hand with her garden. And I said, what would you like to do? And she said, I don't know. I don't want to spend too much money. I don't really want to do too much because I, you know, at this stage in my life, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be doing that. I said, why? She said, well, because, you know, I'm 80 years of age and, you know, who knows how long I've got to live. I said, oh, well, what, what, what if, what if you lived till you were 95? What if it was another 15 years? Are you going to be doing what you're doing right now and saying the same thing for the next 15 years? Because you don't know. None of us know. So what is it you want? What is it you want to do? And she was looking at me and she said, oh, oh, I just don't know. I said, yeah, you do. And the I don't know is fearful and it's facing, it's, it's looking at a fear of life rather than this unfolding of your life still because you have no idea how long that's going to be. The person came along that was meant to come along that was my appointment and we got chatting and during that chat, this person told a story about an uncle who's a very incredibly wealthy man, owns a lot of properties. Not long ago, he was on a major TV show here in Australia called Lifeline. And on that, the person asked him, because he was in his early 80s, the person said to him, why at 83 or 84 or whatever he is, why did you go off and buy a $15 million property when you're already very wealthy? You have lots of properties. You're a major, you know, property owner for, you know, cattle stations or whatever it was, whatever he owns. And um, this is the most important thing I've probably, or the most inspiring thing I've heard in many, many years. The man's reply was this because life's like a football match. I want to play the last fourth of the match, the last quarter, the fourth quarter of the match. I want to play it with as much enthusiasm and as much joy and as much wonderment as I played the first quarter. My friend was sitting on the other side of the table and I looked at her and I thought, I hope you heard that. I hope you heard what that really, really means. So our life is an unfolding and don't get too much into our heads. If that man had been listening to a lot of other people about age and uh, all the rest of the stuff, downsizing and all the rest of the things. Me, I don't want to ever downsize. I'd like to have the house three times a bit larger than the one I've got. Don't let our head get in the way of our intuitiveness and what our heart is saying. And when you walk by the, you know, the bottle of, you know, pills that says, I'll take one of those. Don't worry about why or how or when or in what way or analyze it to death. Just do it. If he says to you, you know what, wouldn't it be nice to go and live in the country? I'd rather live in the country than I would in the city. Try it on, go and see if it fits because it's your intuitive self unfolding this transcendence of joy and spectacularness that life is for us, but we deny ourselves of it. And then we look back and go, whoa, if I had have only known. Wow, that is amazing. I think we've I lost Sherry there for a moment. Yeah, Can you, no, oh, there I, you are. I'm, okay. I'm here, but I was wiping the tears from my eyes. Oh. Honestly, that really, uh, that, that was an amazing sharing. Well, so thank you so much for that. Because I think 
often we let all this stuff get in the way of the spectacular life that we actually have and that we are supposed to be, you know, embracing. And oh, it, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's so thank you again for sharing that. Um, now, Wallace is, is giving a reading um, uh, to one of our guests. And I'm thinking again that we'll use the chat for that if, if that's okay, Wallace. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, just before we go to that, um, the winner of this book is Terry. Now, Terry, I hope you don't mind if I read what you put in the chat. Uh, everyone will have read it. But it said, after 63 years, I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm so blessed. I feel like I'm on a bonus round of life. And, and that in itself, you know, uh, acknowledging that you sometimes don't know where you're going, but acknowledging that, that uh, you know, you are blessed is, is a fabulous outlook on life. So, Terry, I need you to um, put your, your address in the chat or send it to me in an email. Um, it, just so that I make sure that we get that off too. Okay, so now for the reading with Wallace, um, I think I'm going to ask this question and we'll have people put it in the chat. What would I like to stop worrying about? And what is one step I can take to let go of this worry? So thinking of what Wallace was just sharing, um, that's the question. What would I like to, to stop worrying about? And what is one step I can take to let go of this worry? So again, it might take you a few minutes to think about that. We'll give you a few uh, uh, minutes to put your answers in the chat. Um, I just want to mention that we have an article in App 45. It's actually a, a, a profile of Wallace. And uh, I'm not sure, Anne, if, uh, if I had a chance to say this to you, but I left the, um, the link to that article in uh, the agenda and, and if you have a chance you can grab it and put it in the chat so people can read more about the wall uh, the story about Wallace so thank you very much um okay so we're on to our next sharing um, and we are so excited to have Anita Reisinger with us now she's uh, coming to us from germany she's an intuitive guide and a happiness coach she holds a professional certificate in the science of happiness at uc berkeley she's a practitioner of the hawaiian huna i hope i said that right uh, the ancient science of success and happiness now anita is a regular contributor to at 45 a magazine with her weekly affirmations. And Anita was gifted to me again, um, as, as all the wonderful people in my life uh, are a gift. She was gifted um, recently from a woman, again, one of my first people that um, I interviewed for the magazine. And she texted me uh, um, a month ago and said, Sherry, you really need to connect with this woman. Um, I, I think she's got lots to offer and uh, she has now I personally had never been uh, or wasn't that familiar with affirmation and I've learned so much from Anita uh, with her weekly column and, and our chats uh, together so welcome Anita hello everybody um, as Sherry already said I say that I'm intuitive geek. Um, I don't like the word healer for me so far. And I'm a happiness coach. Um, but um, I prefer to say um, that I work intuitively with my clients and um, we dissolve blockages um, that they can work with affirmations. 
um, that's my work. But today I want to work with you um, with affirmations when, when I may. <laughs> and I want to um, talk about my higher self experience. And for me, um, it's not always, as you said already, Sherry, it's not religion. And um, may I um, share a little um, story about a man who was asked once, um, what religion do you believe in? And he said, no religion. And the other man said to him, why no religion? No religion for the sake of religion. And for me, this is a little story. Um, I know that some people come out of the Christian um, tradition and they have sometimes even more problems with, with the Christian tradition than people who are not with the Christian tradition. But um, I want to ask you first of all, um, if it would be able, if, if, if it would be possible um, that you have something to write with you and a little paper. And um, I would um, like to make together an affirmation for us in the group, maybe just a little um, exercise together. That is um, the idea I have. And first of all, Sherry started, by the way, with an affirmation. I am fabulous. That is the first affirmation so far. It's already an affirmation. I'm fabulous. And um, for me, the higher self, um, some people don't like um, when they say they believe in something bigger than them. But then you can also say, I believe in myself. You, you don't even have to talk about God or maybe you, you want to work with the word love. You can work with love instead of God. Um, there is no right or no wrong. That's all I want to say um, for working with affirmations. You can use them and just see them as um, positive sentences you give to yourself. Um, you know that there is self-fulfilling prophecy in a negative way. And affirmations are just the other side of, of, of the coin. Affirmations... Um, are the positive aspect when you say something to your subconscious, to your inner being. And um, some people, maybe sometimes me as well, feel a little bit silly or stupid when they say they talk to God, you know. I don't know if, if um, anybody else has this experience that you feel a little bit not so secure when you say, I talk to God. And for me, um, I once read a really nice expression. It says, prayer is asking God for something. And meditation is listening. And for me, I want to say now for us, a little meditation or a little affirmation, meditation, that something comes up for us all together. And I would say, dear higher self, be with us today. We are open to love, abundance and happiness. Please let us all have some insights on affirmations today together. Thank you. So it is. And you can say amen. And if you don't like the word, you can say so it is. And if you don't want to anything then you say nothing at all that's all in, uh, that it's, it's all okay so far and for me um i would ask to put in a chat maybe something what, what what comes up for you as an affirmation as something that that you you feel good about and maybe a short sentence. I can give an example what came up for me. My higher self is always taking care of me 
and is leading me to the person I am meant to be. And so it is. Amen. And this is what my work is. And I just want to look in the chat. Maybe I can see there something what I want to um, say about. So Anita, can you just say that um, affirmation that you just uh, did uh, again? Do you have it wrote down? I, 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 I should say it again? Yeah, just say it again. It was very powerful, but, you know, the first time you, I, I was focused on listening and, and not really listening. So. <laughs> no, I said, no, because I, I want to apologize for my English. It's not... Of course, not um, English is not my mother tongue, and I would would also um, really suggest that when people work in different languages, they should always try to um, make affirmations in their mother tongue as well. This is for for people who are maybe in Europe, and um, the the language is not English as a mother tongue. They should always translate it in their mother tongue because your subconscious is grown up with your mother tongue. And when I make affirmations for myself, for example, I always make English and German affirmations together. I write the sentence in English, I write it in German, and then I read it. That's a really interesting thing. Um, and don't your your English is we're we're all able to understand you. And I mean, this is a multicultural, multi-country uh, show. So we appreciate you sharing with us. So yeah, if you can just sure. repeat that. I, I say it again, my higher self is always taking care of me. And that's great because when my higher self is taking care of me, I don't have to take care of me every time. And I can trust the universe. I can trust the higher self that like a little child with the parents, I have my parents, I have my higher self and that is taking care of me. And that is very, very releasing because it's not in my hand, it's in the hands of the higher self. And therefore my higher self is always taking care of me and is leading me to the person I am meant to be. And so it is. And we are always in process. We are always um, in development. We are always on the way, on the road. And therefore this sentence um, is never, never done because we are always going further and grow in our spirituality. You can say, for example, um, higher self, you can say spiritual self, and in the tradition I was taught in, you say super conscious, you have your conscious, your subconscious and your super conscious, um, but there are many, many words for the same experience. And the most important thing is that you can feel this power and um, this um, energy this energy what comes there and this is with affirmations that this is it's an energy work affirmation work is an energy work well i i, I honestly had never practiced affirmations before and and so for the last two weeks i've been following yours and in, in the magazine, Anita, and, and definitely I can say that there is power. It's amazing as you're saying the affirmations, um, Anita had recommended you do it in front of the mirror, uh, once in the morning and once with in the With a smile morning. on your face, very important. <laughs> <laughs> with a smile on your face. But what I found intuitively is when you're speaking to the power of that affirmation, the smile comes to your face naturally, right? Because yeah. you definitely do feel the power of, yeah. of the universe supporting that affirmation. So um, what we're looking for is uh, everyone to put an affirmation in the chat. 
and um, there's a number of ones in there. And the um, uh, Anita is going to be giving uh, an affirmation reading to uh, to one of them. So while you're thinking about that and putting your affirmation in, we're just going to go back up and uh, review the answer to our earlier question for the reading with Wallace. And that was, what would I like to stop worrying about? And what is one step I can take to get rid of the worry or to work through the worry? Wallace, had you had a chance to just read? read was it, did any of them? Um, Sorry, I thought... Sherry, I'm muting myself. Yeah, okay. I mean, as they were coming in to, um, to the chat area, I was reading them. And um, one of the, the thing that stands out in all of these things that have been said, and what one of you people will, you know, we'll spend some time together. But for for all of you who have written for me in this um, area, what I'd like to say is this: that every all the things that you've written are based in fear some fear a fear of a fear of something happening a fear of loss a fear of it's all about you know even if it's i want to live in the now if we quieten our mind to live in the now if we just quieten our mind if we just sit still and imagine that the bottom half of us is growing into the ground that's instant nowness so to speak it's instantly putting us into a space where we start moving out of the past the future and we come into the present and don't forget that if we if we are grounded in the now in the moment then we can also believe it or not it all that moment expands out further and we can actually see into our future because our beingness allows that for us so there's no need to be there's no need to be fearful about things that might happen or things that could happen or or you know not having not having this or all of that is fear it, it's all fearful things. So fear is, you know, as we've heard it, and you've probably heard it too, fear is about, you know, false evidence appearing real. It's just a story. There's no truth in it at all. Just a story. It's a story like lots of other stories. Our mind, we tell ourselves. It, and it's like I said before, if we can get our mind out of the way, it's like, it's like Sherry talking before. I keep coming back to the thing about going to, um, you know, going to Greece. All the things around it are fear and stories. The going to Greece, the getting on an aeroplane, everything else is a delight. It's pleasurable. It's the anticipation. It's the adventure. It's the oh, wow, what, you know, how's that going to be? Oh, it's going to be amazing. And we have all this. And then what happens is we start building our storytelling around it. And there's no truth in it. It's as untruthful as anything else around. But we build this story. So when I read these things here in the chat room, a lot of them is a lot of storytelling to yourselves. It's a lot of... What if this happens? What if that happens? It's like my friend who said, well, you know, why, why do anything? I'm 80 years of age. Well, well, what if you live to another 15? And what if some of those things happen? What if? Don't, don't live in the what ifs, you know, don't, don't get into the fear of it all and, and what might happen. See your lives as abundant and pleasurable and joyous and spectacular and adventuresome and, you know, 
don't build stories. Sto the stories we build are the boogeyman's. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I, I also think that um, when you, um, you know, when you're constantly fearing a thing and you're bringing that negativity into into your life, because like somebody said, I can't remember who it was, that they keep on thinking about it. How do I stop thinking about it? You just got to, you've just got to stop that negative thought. Because remember, everything you put out there comes comes to you. So, you know, you got it when that negative, when that voice comes in your head, just tell it to, <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to just tell it you know, go and replace it with a positive thinking. You can't be thinking that something's going to happen to your child. Um, if, if, and, and, you know, cause then something will happen to your child. I mean, it ultimately, whatever you put out there comes back to you. So, um, you just got to, you know, got to take that negative thought away and put something positive in its place. Don't you agree? Well, one of the way Sorry, Anne. One of the ways to do that, one of the, you know, sometimes when we go, well, you know, replace the thought, it, it, it's actually quite difficult at times when all that's overrunning your mind. But, you know, the simple thing with it is, is just to stop and say, where would I be without the thought? Who would I be without that thought? Absolutely. Who would I be without that thought? Yeah, that that is so true. That that's a good way to look at it. Uh, when you're when you're faced with with those fears, is to say, if I didn't believe this, what what would I well, be who, doing? Who would instead? I be without it? Who would I be without that thought? Yeah. And then, what that does instantly is it shifts you and your thinking to another to another inquiry. It's another inquiry. If you can shift the inquiry from all that coming in, the person who, you know, is fearful about, you know, their child, looking at other people's dilemmas, looking around at everything else. If we all do that, we'll go crazy. You know, we, we, we'll, we then, we'll end up in straitjackets in the nut house. Yeah. yeah. Simple. Well, we, we just simply will. Because, and that applies to all of us. You know, as we get older, you know, as I've gotten older, you know, there was a time when I got into a whole lot of things and the night time seems to be worse. You know, the boogeyman's really come out of the cupboards. But, you know, you, you just, you've, you've just simply got to switch the thinking to going, where, who would I be? Who would I be without that thought? Where would I be? What would I be? You know, because suddenly then you're going, well, I'd be certainly be much happier. I'd be less stressed. I wouldn't be worried about, you know, my, you know, my child, you know, going out and getting on the bus on their own or, or I wouldn't have this whole, you know, because we all, we, you know, those of us that have been parents, we all have had that sort of thing. You know, when the kids go to school and when, I, when they get their first bloody motor car and you think, oh, geez, you know, stay up all night, you know, where are they? They're not home yet. They should have been here an hour ago. And they come in through the door and you'd like to hit them over the head, but you throw your arms around them and say, thank God you're home. We all have been there. It's letting go. It is not. Remember this. I want you to remember this, if nothing else, that those around us who we love and care for are a gift. But but they have their own lives, and they come. They come like us to do something specifically and when it's time to go they will go and it's not up to you and it's not your choice and it's not your decision and it's got nothing to do with you and everything to do with spirit and they made the pact before they come remember that they are a great soul on a great soul's journey their own soul's journey, and it is not yours. 
you are on yours, they are on theirs. Remember that, that their journey is of a great soul, an individual great soul, just like yours. You don't own it. You're just the custodian of the time and you hold it in a space for it to do what it needs to do because it chose you to learn some lessons from. That's all, nothing more. Well, I think that's, that, that's so profound. And so I think it's, it's apt that we say, Arlene Chanel, uh, we're going to get you in uh, contact with Wallace Patterson for that reading, um, you know, because you, you shared that one of the worries is about your son's health. And, and so it, I, I, I'm just led to say that's a good match for uh, that door prize. So we'll get you both in touch. So thank you, Wallace, again for that wisdom. So now we're going back down to um, affirmations. And uh, Anita, were you able to read some of the affirmations there in the notes? Yes. And um, I want to thank all, all of you for participating. And I, may I, may, may I choose or you choose? You, or? you go ahead and choose if you're led to pick someone that you yes, can choose. Sure. I have two favorites. <laughs> Anne, well, but, go for but both of them. Anne is the host. I would, I would not, maybe. And what? Uh, and the, the 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 story of Teresa is so fascinating because I think um, she wrote. May I say that what she wrote? Yes. And she wrote that she's um, hearing affirmation when she's creating her art with stones. And she wrote one affirmation, live strong, create strong, love what you love strong. And this is more than an affirmation for me. And that is um, the spirit talking to her. Okay. And that is more than an a usual affirmation because in affirmations you usually say you can pick one sentence i am beautiful i am such and such but this is so powerful and i would if i may and if teresa says yes i um, would give her um a little work from me as a gift well thank you very much anita so Teresa and Anne, you're in for a special treat. And Teresa, I do, well, I do love it. Sherry, not me, because I'm, I'm the, the, the co-host. So yes, and that what, what, what I thought. Yes, yes, yes. I give it to someone yes. else. I just participated because I wanted to. <laughs> but give it to Teresa. Thank you very much. There you go, Teresa. So. Uh, a powerful thinking, uh, powerful things to take through our week. Uh, and thank you very much for everyone for participating and, and being bold and brave enough um, to, to put, you know, your thoughts in, in the chat. Um, next week, we are going to be talking about our health. Um, so getting reacquainted uh, with our body so that we can support and nourish our wellness. And um, I, everything, every time I ask the question uh, with uh, uh, the audience in App 45 about what you're concerned about, that is the number one that thing, thing that comes up. You know, without our health, oh my goodness, there, we, we can't accomplish much. Um, life becomes very finite. Uh, when uh, we don't have our health. So we had some uh, interesting uh, people coming to share um, their knowledge on uh, health and wellness next week. So I want to thank everyone for coming today. It's been uh, fascinating. We will connect you uh, with um, the winners and the, and the person giving the prize. 
uh, through emails and um, get the, the book off to you. Uh, it's just been, honestly, it is, it's, it's just been such a satisfying show. So remember to be fabulous and live fabulous. And thank you everyone for coming. See you next week. Bye.